I put a note in the room about that earlier. <clears throat> and basically, what is the real time here? Is it 925 or 928? Thanks, I silver. I, I just have way too many different clocks in my apartment. This is like insanity. I think it's 925 or 926. So basically, yes, thank you. Good to be back. Good to be back and basically here at it. And the reality of the situation is that earnings season really doesn't start till tomorrow. Do we have non earnings gaps? Yes. Are we going to have a million this week though? No. Why? People took off this week for the holiday as well. It was a weird July 4th because it fell over the weekend. So some people took off last week and some people are taking off this week. So there's an overlap of a two week period where the market is going to be, you know, in, people are in and out. Some other off on holiday. So <clears throat> we're going to be very, 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 very picky. Not that I'm never not picky. But I've been on such a roll lately that I'm planning on continuing that in July. Uh, going to talk about something when we're done today. Going to talk about two things when we're done today. <clears throat> Three things that we have time, which you probably won't. But I will call AMD for anyone that wants to do it. You really would be doing this for a miniature target. You would have to take a bazillion, kajillion shares to make any money. Is that something that I would want to do anyways? Not really. Not for my first day back after being off a week. So it's like neither here nor there. But I will call it for the room. And for those of you that are new, this is actually great practice. This is not a whippy stock. This is not a crazy stock. So the fact is that you could practice on this today for those of you that are new. It would be a good one to practice on. Let me just look at the market. Nothing else looks good today. Market's going to be sideways, Bill, USA again today. Don't look for anything from the market today. Could be red, could be green, could be neutral. Boy, this market is, looks just like a slop city USA lately. Slop, sloppy, sloppy, slop. We will go over the market lately. I mean, we will. Um, 900 shares and a $2.50 spread. What looks like good about that to you? Why are you people desperate to trade? Right now, write it in the room, right now. Tell me why you're desperate to trade today. I haven't traded, well, I did do the whatchamacallit last week. Uh, the APOL. But, you know, I mean, some of you were here last week. Tom did the room. What, why are people desperate to trade? It has 900 shares, 900 shares. I tell you right now, I have no idea where this is opening. 900 shares. 900. The stock that we're watching here is AMD, if anyone wants to do it. And we have to pay attention here now. I'm going to call this for anyone that wants to do it, but I'm not. I'm passing today. Um, to the target is 180, 180, 186, 180, 175. Dream target is 150, and I don't think it gets there unless the market falls. Wednesday. And we'll go over that stuff. Well, when is today? Tuesday? I don't remember if it's Wednesday morning or Wednesday night. I, I don't even remember now if it's Wednesday, if it's tonight or tomorrow night or tomorrow morning for the stuff that I saw this week I like. So we'll look at that when we're done. Here, focus for those of you that want to do it. And I do a Royal AMD must rally. Rally and rally at least up to 210, possibly 220, 225 would be the best short for this today. If this does not rally first and breaks early, I'll call it. It'll be way too aggressive and I think that it fails. I'll call the first setup I see. But I honestly would do exactly what I'm doing today, which is actually nothing. But if you insist, I will watch this. But I'm not even sure I'm going to call it because I don't even know if it's going to do anything right here. So we'll sit here and we'll wait.
I should be doing anything about it because I'm doing it again. You're, you're literally doing this for one hour, though. <clears> okay, <throat> 03 by... 03 by 12. 2 by 12. 2 by 12. Two, two, 10 pennies. 2 by 12. And put this dot where I'm telling you to put it. 2 by 12. 2 by 12 a.m. Be short if you want it. You short it at 202. And you put the stop at 212. I am not doing this. The target is 10 cents away. But if you want to do it, 2 by 12. Yeah, same here, New Jersey traders. Don't, don't sweat a bullet. Okay, so two by 12, let me just quick look at the market, but that's valid if it sets up AMD. Market is just so sloppy. Let me look at these other ones here. Ugh, 40 cents spread. Oh my lanta. No. This is valid, this is the only thing. It did not hit yet though. Actually, it's off. It's off now because it didn't hit. It's off because it didn't hit. It's off because it didn't hit. If it, here, 03 by 12. 03 by 12, you get one penny more. 03 by 12, you can do AMD if it breaks 03 by 12. Nothing else is even remotely, should, no one should be doing anything else. Actually, this looks like it's going to hit. But I would really wait till it hits. <clears throat> is anyone going to do this? Am I talking to no one's going to do this or what? I mean, I'm not doing this. But is anyone going to do this? Does anyone even want to do this? And is anyone going to do it? <clears throat> oh, 03 by 12. It looks like it's going to hit. It actually looks like it's going to hit. Yep, there it did. It just hit. It just hit in there. I said it looked like it was going to hit. It's going to hit. Put the stop though where I told you. 212. 212. It's not over the high. Put it at 212. And you're going to, I mean, literally. This could break, listen, for those of you that just did it, it could break $2 right away and go right down to the target, in which case you better have the order out to hit you there because it could just hit you there and it could bounce up and be done. Like this could go down right away once it breaks two, hit the target and bounce. So you could, you really should put the order out to fill you almost at 185, 186, 180. Like this could go when it breaks two and go poof and then be done. So, and you could miss the exit. So there's the suggestion, but I didn't do it and it did hit and you could have done it. All small targets, very, very small. Trader Gal took some. NC Beach Guy, did you do it? All right, let's look at the rest of these that I had on the secondary list. Boy, this course. Man, oh, man, oh, man. This was a nice swing trade that I called. Who did the course? Jaguar Paw, did you do the course? Look at this thing here. It's falling off a cliff. <gasps> oh! Did, who all did the swing trade in this that I called in cores? I, uh, you're in, you're in it. I silver. Are you in AMD? Or are you in the cores? Galahad did the cores. This is a swing trade. I'm not calling this today as a day trade, not yet. Oh, you're in the AMD. It's going to be snail sitting until it breaks two. It didn't do that yet. Let's look at the market. Let's look at the market. Let's look at Mu. Gala has half a cores left, and Jaguar Paw did it, but he's all out. Ah, uh, your chicken Jaguar Paw. <gasps> Mew! All right, hold on. Jeez. <sighs> Mew was another swing trade I called that got to the target yesterday. This is ridiculousness. I should just do all my own swing trades and not even day trade. I don't want to call this here, though. I'm not going to call this here. This has been, actually, the last two weeks because the market's been whatever it's been with what's going on with the whole grease thing which we're going to talk about a lot of these shorts that i call the swing trades have gone to the target it's pretty hilarious actually it's pretty hilarious i'm here i'm going to call if you want you short right in here short of the stop at 1825 this is so aggressive this is so aggressive but you can short it here this is breaking that you could short mew it's it's like 10 cents late stop has to be 1825 oh look at this well i really didn't think this would go like this big today but mew that's the high of the day in Mew. This is very aggressive, but it looks like that's it. Ay, 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 you you. This just broke 18. I'm not doing anything today. I'm not doing anything today. And no one could have conceived that this could have even broke like that today. But if you want to short Mew and it rallies back, I'll call it. But I just called it there before it just had that big red push. I'm not doing anything, though. I'm really not. Yeah, 
Uh, here, I'll sit and watch this for another setup. I'll sit and watch this for another setup. Ay, ay, ay. You took AMD half size shower singer. All right. Wow, this broke 18 today. This is this could fall off a planet as well. I'll call this if this pushes back. Mew. You don't have the market against you today. And you don't have the market with you today. You don't have anything from the market at all today. So you have to have a good gap, which you have to have anyways. But there really wasn't any except for this. The only problem is with this is that, as you can see, this is a snail. And you have to have the stop at 212. And it didn't break two. It did not. All right, if the Qs go down and break yesterday's low, they're going to fall today. But we're still not really going to fall off the planet. But if the Qs go down and break yesterday's low, it's going to fall. In reference to the SPY, it's not going to break yesterday's low, but it could fall down into it. I don't even know if that's going to happen. I'm just saying. Mew. You could take a trade in Mew and short it and put the stop at 18.25. It's 35 cents from here. Target is really $17 today in Mew. And this is late, okay? It should have been hit up earlier, but I'm still calling this valid now and telling you to put the stop at the right place. If you want to do Mew, don't wait any longer if you want to do it. It may not push back again because no one's going to buy this today. No one is going to buy this today. Ay, 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 I really just, who could have conceived? I don't think this even really had any information. Let me just look. Well, I did have a little bit. Look at this. Here, is anyone doing the Mew? Because of the drop off in the market in the last few days, all the shorts I called as swing trades have gone to their targets. It's pretty hilarious. No one, you don't, you don't know what the market's going to do. I called the targets, you're in the trade. But, you know, no one should have killed actually any of the whole entire positions of any of the, of the swing trade shorts because they're working and you're up. You get out of a piece of it. We can go over that later. Look at this. I'm just going to sit here and look at this. This is just silliness now. Let me see the Yahoo. Nothing has any risk to reward today. That's the, my biggest bugaboo because none of these gaps were good. I just, you know. What about urban? You did an options on the cores, and the thing with the option is the timing. You had to take the profits to protect the profits. All right. PBR I'll look at. Cores I'll look at. What are you doing with this urban here right now? You're not day trading this today. There's nothing with that. Um, PBR. I don't like these things, as you know. Okay. I don't see any target in this. I'm telling you, that isn't the low of the day. The target on Mew is 17.50, and the, and the real target today on Mew is 17. This this is really actually a good trade here. I would not have called it with a big stop like that if I didn't think that that was the high of the day. You, This is valid, but it was a late call. No one would have thought to actually do this that quickly even still, you only would have gotten it 10 pennies better. If it pushes back again, I'll call it again. The stop on this is 1825. I'm not in this. I don't even know what this gap would have rated. I'm calling this on the fly. This is really a continuation gap. And it's a swing trade that I called that just hit, hit the second target right in here today. Here, you want a kamikaze on Mew? I'm going to call it 80 by 18. 05. 80 by 1805. This is a kamikaze play in Mew. Right there. It just hit. It's just, it's just this break. And no one's going to buy this today. No one in the planet. You'd only have green from shore covering in this today. And who the heck would get out? If I was in this as a swing trade, I would not be getting out. And if I was in this as a day trade, I wouldn't be getting out. So no one's going to buy this today. A kamikaze. Put it at 1802. Give it two pennies over the number. But the stop really should be in it, if you wanted to be in it, to the main big number. It should be 1825. But no one is going to buy this today. No one. <clears throat> what happened with AMD? 
snail city of the planet, of ever on the planet. It, 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 some people did this. Oh my gosh, I'm so glad I didn't do it. I have no patience. I, I can't I can't do things where I have no patience. INTC. Let's move 15 cents. Nothing has any target. Nothing. Ah. Um, let's look at Netflix. This is, looks great. Netflix looks amazing. Still very strong. Look at here. I'm just going to talk about one thing here. Do you see what the market did in the last week and what Netflix did? This is a pillar of strength, people. Pillar of strength. I think July 15th was the date for the whole stock thing, but and I don't know if this goes anywhere before then <clears throat> or not, but I'm telling you this is a pillar of strength here. Because look at what the market did in the last week. Let me look at APOL. It's probably sell today, too. Is anyone anything else you want me to look at? Yeah, you, you really basically trader gal, yeah, options on Netflix. And I don't do options either, but this doesn't have enough volume. The one today to do with the volume that's working is Mew. And it's still working. So the kamikaze stop is put it over 18, 1805 or 1802. The real stop should be 1825 for the bigger number, which is 1750 or 17. If it pushes back here, I'll call it on the two minute or the five minute chart. Because this isn't a new gap today, you have to be patient with it going. But actually, like as I said earlier, no one will buy Mew today. And therefore, this is probably one of the weakest things you could be in if you want to do a day trade short today. AMD is trying to break the low, which would be 202. Once it breaks $2 and breaks under that number, it could literally go 10 pennies right down to the next target. You should probably have an order to fill you when it hits the number before it gets to at least half of your position because it could bounce at that number. And there's so little to be made here that you don't want to, like five pennies is half your profit. I didn't do this because it didn't make sense with the target. It also is very cheap. Do I have special requirements for a cheapness? Mm, not really, except for I don't do penny stocks, but I really have to feel like I can have something to make money in. I didn't see it really in here today. I did put 150 in the room, but the chances of that were like slim to none without the market. And even the market actually, look, is red so far for the beginning part of the day. In the first 15 minutes, the market is red, and AMD hasn't broken too. So it just doesn't have enough going on within itself today. There's just not enough shock here. There's not enough... Not enough. Let's look at what's out for tonight. I didn't feel desperate today. It was a positive thing. I feel very, very calm. I'm taking my B vitamins, as we all should. Uh, July 7th, TCS, too thin. HCSG, too thin. Let's look at tomorrow morning. Nothing tomorrow morning. Mew? No, no, no. The stop on this is 1825. If you did the kamikaze, put it over 18. 1802 or 1805. This will actually set up again. I actually will be able to call this again. So if you didn't do it, this isn't, this is okay. Eighty-three by eighteen oh five. I put the stop really at eighteen oh five. Eighty-three by eighteen oh five. Twenty cents basically on mu. If that hits, it's a valid trade. You can short this. It's this is so weak. Eighty-three by eighteen oh five. And you could even lower the stop if you did it before at eighteen oh five. This should not back up over eighteen if it's going to keep going. And that's my professional opinion.
Is anyone in anything at all besides this? Or this? Smell! Is anyone in anything at all besides AMD and Mew? L uh, Linda Short of the Mew, Trader Gals in the Cores. Stop on this must be 4190. It really should be over 42. You could put it at 4190, but it really should be at 42. These traders and nothing. You could do 59 by 90 cores. Here, I'm calling a trade. It's a 40 cent stop though. 59 by 90, and the stop is big, and it really has to break 41 to really have the payout. I don't see risk to word in anything today. Be careful. Do what I'm doing, which is nothing. Did anyone do anything yesterday? Did anyone do anything yesterday at all? Don't be desperate. I know that we will get one good thing this week. I don't know if it's going to be tomorrow, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. I have no idea. But I know we will get at least one good thing this week. And I'm perfectly fine with waiting. Freedom Traders in the Mew. Galleon's not in anything. Beast Traders not in anything. All right, let's go over APOL from last week. And then we'll go over the market. And then does anyone want to talk about anything else if not there's no earnings that I like out tonight everything is thin will there be gaps of that things happen tonight that are not earnings or pre-announcements yes but I, do, I can't say what they are until I see them the earnings season officially starts tomorrow after hours which is Wednesday evening so we may have something tomorrow we may not we will have something this week we might have something every day this week but not today uh, you're in the mew you're in Vegas hearing the news and the grease thing, thinking the room is probably killing today. Are you talking about Monday? All right, let's just talk about the market. Screw the APOL. Let's talk about the market. And I have quite a lot to say on this. Actually, let me just turn off my dishwasher is beeping. Let me turn that off so I can focus on talking to everyone here. I'm not calling any more trades today. I'm going to talk about the market. Let me just turn off that beeper. Hold on one sec. Yeah. So I don't remember what day it was. I think it was a Sunday. Whatever day it was that Tom texted me and so did some other people as well. It was the 29th. Was that a Sunday? I think it was. Hold on, let me just look. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was Sunday that Tom texted me. Jen texted me. A bunch of other people texted me as well. Market's down huge, or futures are down huge, or whatever uh, the taxes were I got on Sunday night. This was the night before the Monday of this thing here, which was the 29th. Let me blow it up. Yeah, let's let's talk about the cues. So, anyways, I I I well, I was in bed whenever everyone was texting me, and I was like, whatever. And I was off for the week, and I didn't really care to look at anything. But when I got up in the morning, I did look at it, and I chuckled to myself. I actually chuckled in bed because I thought to myself, well, we'll see. Because you know what's so funny? I exaggerate a lot of things in my personal life. Like, for example, if my bangs aren't actually perfect, like, or when I get a haircut, or when I curl my hair, or something about my makeup. Like, I can be a fanatic, like, where I'm exaggerating, like, something's you know crazily off like with my hair or something like I blow things out of proportion like with my hair or whatever but the reality is like I'm exaggerating and I kind of do know that it's like a thing with me and I have found that in reference to trading traders are like that they over exaggerate we have discussed this before I kind of laugh to myself about it because I know I'm like that with other things in my life like but I'm not like that with things like gaps which is funny Okay, because I am like about my hair. Like if I have one bang out of place or something, or if it's like one smidgen too long, I feel like I gotta go get a trim. Then if it's one smidgen too short, then I feel like it's too short, and I feel like I look like a little girl. Like I'm a fanatic about things like that, over-exaggerating. But I'm not in relationship to gaps, which is so unusual, okay? 
The fact is that I chuckled to myself because I thought, I bet it's not down that much. And when I got up in the morning and looked at the gap, I thought, this is really not down that much. I did think the market was a short that day, which it was. But I will tell you that the market rallied quite a lot before it set up as a short. On 629, let's go look at the 15 minute. Here. This did have quite a rally into the open before it triggered. Like from the low in here, it's 107.89. So this wasn't quite a dollar, but in the first five minutes, it rallied a buck. Okay, that's not small. So it went poop, and then it did fall. The market was a short on the day. It was a short in the gap, I saw it, but it had a big rally first. But this was nothing to get insane about. Now, many, many people have been talking about the grease thing with me the last week, even though I'm off. And those of you that have emailed and stuff and made commentaries or whatever, in general, though, that has nothing to do with anything that I've taught you. And even Alex, when I talked to him yesterday, was talking about the grease thing from yesterday. And the market was a long. And actually, Tom texted me on Sunday night, and I texted him, the market is a long. I, the market is a long. I texted him that. I don't remember when I texted you, Tom, but I said the market's a long. I was right. And I, it was like I didn't even need to look at it, and I knew the market was a long. But the market was a long. If you had rated the gap yesterday in the market as a short, it was not a short. And it wasn't a short. The market was not a short yesterday. The things that I teach you are to read price action levels in the gap and make decisions accordingly. Don't get in your head thinking Greece is going to fall off a planet and you can short to everything in the world. Why did some of the swing trades that I called in the last month go to the targets in the last week? Because the market is weak. But that's not why they went to the target. They went to the target because they were good shorts. The market helped push them over the cliff, so to speak. They didn't go because of the market, though. They went because they were going to go. The market just helped them go poof and push them over the cliff faster. But they were going to go anyways to the targets that I gave them the swing trade letters. The market just gave them a push and they went poof and they went. But the fact is they would have gone anyways because of the way that I called the trades in the gap because they were weak stocks that were going to fall. The market gave them the push to go very quickly to the targets. But that's not why they went. And nothing goes because of the market. It goes if it's a good gap. And the same thing with the market gap. This actually was a good short on the day in this, but it was tough to take. Okay, if you were too aggressive in this or didn't do it right or see the levels, you could have bought this or you might have missed the short in this because it set up quick and then it fell off a planet. Okay, it really didn't even give you barely a smidgen of a time to short it. And if you tried to buy it, you lost. Like you didn't have a lot of room for error in here. Like it was like, this was not easy, people. Now, I don't know if you shorted this or not. It was a short, but it was not easy to do, okay? So I don't know what I ended up doing, but the reality was this is not something that creates what I would consider something that for follow through. Could you have shorted on the day? Yes. Did I laugh in my head when everyone's saying panic of Greece? Yes, because I thought I can't wait to see where we're really doing in the gap. But when I got up in the morning, I thought, yeah, yeah. no. Everything I taught you has to do with reading price action. If you're in your head watching the news or talking to other people, it can affect your trading decisions properly and reading the price. If it helps you and gives you more conviction, do it. If it takes away from your conviction, it's a problem. If you take a trade wanting to short something because you think the market's going to fall off a planet because of Greece, in a weak stock or anything that's gapping down, it, you may lose because it may not be good because you just think everything's going to fall. Okay. Oh, Trader Gal, look at those charts in a minute. Okay, getting back to what I was saying here, though, about the uh, the market. For those of you that like to think conceptually, which some of you do, Tom is one of those people. Everybody that wants to think in their mind the conceptual rationalization for something doing something this is gapping down because the earnings are terrible the earnings are great Netflix is doing this the market grease if you are a conceptual person if you are a thinker by the way I'm a thinker too but I'm thinking I think in terms of numbers when I trade quite frankly I don't think in terms of analyzation of the intellectualness of why something's happening. I, I'm not in my head about that. I don't care. I don't even need it to trade. And I try to teach you that. But I'm telling you, if you are in your head about having to rationalize and conceptualize why things do a certain thing, you sometimes can be affected by something that happened this week. In the case of seeing or thinking that with the gap down and the grease news, the market is 
A, definitively lower, which it's not, or B, going to fall every single day, which, which it's, it's really not, <laughs> although you couldn't have really bought the market any time in the last week and made money. But the market is still higher, still going to make a new high, and it's still not breaking. Okay. So the danger in needing that rationalization above and beyond the price action is that you err in the decision of the actual price action. And that is something I caution you on. And that is why I don't like people to sometimes say things in the room and I want to be in my own head and I don't watch the news or the television or read any of this stuff. It was hard, like, if you'd have to live in a vacuum if you would not hear about Greece, though. Even though I don't watch or listen to all this stuff, you would have to basically live in a vacuum, okay? And I, and, and I don't live in a vacuum, so obviously I heard about it. But in general, I'm saying it can affect your ability to misread or represent something that's happening in the price. Like seeing the gap that happened in the market on June 29th and thinking that it was something that was going to break and shake this whole market, which a lot of trading places and rooms and teaching places out there are saying. And, and, the, and the news and all of these things. But I'm telling you, with 100% conviction, the market is still going to make a new high. Anyone, if you even want to intellectualize it, if you must for yourself, just think for a minute. I said this to Alex yesterday. Do you really think that Greece is going to pay back or be able to afford all of this stuff? Like, that is not just something that we just figured out on June 29th. Do you understand what I'm saying? Like, even if you need to understand things, do you really think that actually all of a sudden on Monday, everybody realized that Greece was going to be default? Like, every, like, really? Are you serious? Like, you don't even need to be, um, you know, have a doctorate in, in, in econ to know that that is an impossibility. Everything they've done is a band-aid. And unless they come up with a real solution or, or Europe just continues to support Greece, there is no solution for them. So do you really think that this is new news? No. Again, this is all built into the system already. So it was a temporary reaction, which we sometimes see. And which we sometimes do in a gap, and we may short gaps. And you could have shorted the market gap on Monday, last week. But it is a temporary reaction. It's not a permanent reaction. And if you need to intellectualize, I want you to think about what I just said. Do you really think that the people in charge of the world <laughs> think that Greece is going to all of a sudden now pay everything back? No. So there was not that there. Do you understand what I'm saying? So if you need to conceptualize it, I just gave you reason to understand what I'm reading in the price anyways, which is already that it is built into the system. And that shouldn't be the reason for you taking the trade anyways. It should be you rating the gap and taking the gap and reading the price action. But I'm telling you, if you need to be an intellectual, think about what I just said. Trader gal has a word of the day. It's called propel. All right, hold on. Let me look at Mew. Are we getting words of the day now? Or is that what you want me to make a word of the day? Nice call here. I just did on this. Oh, my Lanta. Why didn't I do this myself? I don't feel like trading today now after there's no good gaps. Look at this. Oh, my Lanta. Who did the Mew? Nice call in here. I don't even, I can't even believe I just called that. Uh, you think people follow people. And people are moving into bonds and treasuries. So if people began exiting, that might even propel our shorts. <laughs> You're funny with the propel. PBR new lows, let me look. I didn't call this, Tom did it. It does appear to be working. <coughs> I didn't call it though. So I, I hear Tom did call some good trades last week. Thank you for doing the room, Tom. If you did his calls. Some of you were off as well. The APL did work. We can talk about that in a minute, but let's go back to the market. So is my point well taken here about the market? Okay. Yes, high five to you as well. Is my point well taken on the market here, though? You know, basically. Does everyone understand? I mean, it's very interesting, though, getting back to this whole idea of uh, – I mean, and, and I don't, I don't do options. Okay. Um, it is challenging sometimes to predict the timing in things. That's one of the reasons I like to just straight day trade the equity. I don't, I don't have to be caught in that. I don't have to be caught up in that. 
Now, even, even in that, sometimes when I day trade, I may think something's going to a bigger target, and I may get the drop, take half that, it bounces back and hits me out and doesn't go to the bigger target. You know what I'm saying? Like, but then it does the next day. It's in a continuation gap. So the reality is timing is like one of these esoteric things in the market. Do I have the targets? Yes. Do we get the targets every single day? No. Do I get the targets right in the chart? A lot. Absolutely, I do. I do. I do because my gap rating method for the longer term, incorporating with the day trade, actually has beautiful follow through. And if I was doing QQQ short yesterday, I, or whatever day that was, which I wouldn't have called it, but I would have said the markets are short, but I wouldn't have called the trade. If I would have done it, it went to the target, and that would have been it. I wouldn't have any other bigger targets in this. This chart isn't going to break. But the reality is, though, that people think it is. Could that promote or propel, as TraderGal would say? Could that propel some more selling in the market? Yes. Could it propel some more selling in some other stocks? Yes. Whether the stocks are strong stocks or weak stocks, it could propel some more selling over the course of the next few days or weeks or months in the market. I won't complain because I like to short. And I won't complain a woot. And we may not make a new high until August or September, October, who knows? But I'm telling you that we still will. Because what has happened in the market, in reference to the price action and the gaps, which is all that I read and care about and tells me everything I need to know and tells you, which is why I taught you how to do it and I want you to do it, tells me that this is chart is not breaking, that the market is still higher. Okay. And if I didn't need my money and I was in long positions, I wouldn't exit them, knowing that. And knowing that the move that the market's going to make is still going to be uh, um, unbelievable and very unexpected. Even more so now, it was just giving more confidence and conviction in the call that I've originally made, which is that the market is going to blast off when it goes above and beyond. Because you know now that people are shorting this. They are not institutions. Okay. But you did have selling in the last week. And... You know, it's, it's noteworthy talking about. And everyone, everyone probably thinks the market's lower. The bar in the SPY on this day was big. It was. We did not come down to the 200 period moving average in the QQQs, but we did in the SPY. But the SPY overall has been much, 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 much stronger than the QQQs in the last several years. So it really doesn't mean anything necessarily. Mu first target is 1750. I think it's on its way there. It'll get to 1750. It looks like today. 1750 is the first target in Mu. It's you're you're almost there. That was a nice call out in no man's land. So I you know again no piggy targets today. No good new gaps. I called a good trade in this. No piggers. If this doesn't break 1750, if it gets anywhere near it, take it out. You could even take half out here. It's 10 o'clock. Take half out here if it bounces over 70 and let the rest ride on down. No pigs today. I didn't do anything at all. Baba, out of Mew, nice trade. Okay, good. Uh, what is the Baba doing? Anyways, does everyone have any questions about the market? I haven't done any market videos in so long on YouTube and I need to do some, but let's look at this. Whoa, this fell today. I doubt I would have done this selling, but look. There was a nice entry in here. This is very tough to get. It's dropped more than a dollar. Wow, look at that, a dollar fifty. I would have had to like this gap. I, I, I probably would have, I would have had to rate this gap. I don't know, this actually fell. I'm not sure why this gap, let me look. It's good to take a few days off. I didn't have enough time off. I had to do stuff for all this project, and I really, I've started writing the book. I really have started writing the book. And I was talking to Linda last night. I, I, if I don't need 55,000 words, that's good news. But actually writing a book was more challenging than I thought it would be because I like to talk so much. But when you're writing things, they ha it has to come together better. And... So I worked in the book a lot in the last week. I, I really didn't take every single day off. <clears throat> I don't see any reason for this gap at all. It's just, it's just gap. So 
but my time off was not enough. But I'm very anxious to have a very, very strong July. I believe that we can. Yeah, let's talk about that like today or tomorrow. Uh, what was I going to say? Oh, one more thing I want to say then today, and then I'll just let everybody go. I'm not calling any more trades. And it, you should have done the mute if you wanted to do anything. I mean, if you wanted to do anything, you should have done this. Look, this is 10 pennies from the target. Oh, my Lanta. I even forget what I said was the next swing trade target. Those of you that did it. The swing trade target, I know I said 18, 18, uh, I know I said 1830 something, 1825, $18. What was the next one in here on this? Does anyone know? I think I said 1775. This is hitting them all. Oh, my Lanta. This was a nice call. This was a nice call. And let me tell you something. I don't even know how I see these things. This thing gapped down. Look, this is a learning lesson. The stock closed the night before the gap at 2402. And then it gapped down here at 20 on the open at 2027. We shored this gap. It was a good gap. For those of you that were here, it was a nice gap. This was Friday, I believe. Yes, it was. Friday the 26th, before the holiday week. To call this as a swing trade, which is what I did, after the stock gap down $4, which is working, by the way. Do you have any idea how many people would never, never be able to do that? They would say it would rally, fill the gap, push back, reverse, do something. This gap down $4, and I called it as a swing trade lower, and it is working. I'm telling you, I can read weakness all over the planet like nobody's business. This was so, such a beautiful call to make this here. Look, at this is at the target. I can't believe I didn't do this myself today. Now I'm a little irritated with myself. <gasps> Here, it may even break 50, but if it doesn't, get out. Anyways, the point I'm trying to make is listen to what I say, and I can read weakness. This is very aggressive for any person that trades to call a swing trade in this after this gap, but I saw it, and I called it because I know how to read gaps and charts, and that's why I'm telling you that the market is higher still. Even everything it's done in the last week, it is still higher. I know what weakness looks like. I know what temporary weakness looks like, and I know what real weakness looks like. And how do I know my gap rating system? We should have been day trading the pup, the pup in the mew. Well, I don't know. I called the day of the day trade the 26th I was here. I just called it today. Oh, my Lanta, this is gonna break 1750. Here, this is, the, this is it, people. Those of you that are in it, this is it. Literally, this is it in the mute. If it doesn't break 50, get all out. This is the trade in here. It's 10.08. There's nothing to do today. Here, let it break. Try to break 50. I should have taken this myself. Why didn't I do that? This is actually a several hour trade in here now because it broke from the number that I called it. And I said you could put the stop at 18.05. From where I called it up in here, this is, this is a trade. This is real in here. Here, if this doesn't break 50, they'll take it. I'll look at AMD in a minute, but let me just see here if this breaks. Really be out if it doesn't break, though. No, it's going to break it. This is hilariousness. Tom, did you do mute? Who all did mute? Right in the room. Right in the room right now. It looks like it's going to break 50. Stay with it. Trader gal did it. Good job. Linda did it, I know. And it got to the target. I don't even know where I get these things. I didn't even read this gap. I called this on the fly, and it's going to break 50. I called this on the fly, and I haven't been trading for a week. You never lose it when you know how to trade. There it goes. Boop. Here, don't let this bounce against you over 55, though. Take it, take it, take it if it goes over 55. Freedom Trader did the mew. Oh, my gosh, it's still going, though. Insanity. Surf Dog did it. Surf Dog, I'm glad you did what I called it, not that piece of crap thing you were looking at with no volume. Trader goes out. New Jersey Trader is out. Smitty took it as well. Here, this is it. That's the exit. Take it. Done. Boom. All right. AMD. AMD never broke $2, which was not good. Okay, market's red, came down here into 945, did not break the low of the day, didn't break $2, couldn't do it. 
stop on this if you did it was 211 it didn't poop you over it it just went eh. so you actually should have just gotten out of this it, and this isn't working it really needed to push back more into the open it didn't do it I didn't do it because I didn't like the target some of you didn't do it for other reasons as well if you did this you took a stop I didn't think it was worth it I'm glad I didn't do it that was a right decision it never broke in here which it needed to do Mew was the one FCX, I'll look at quickly and then I'm going to let everyone go. I have no idea what we're going to get tomorrow. Don't be over anxious if we don't have a good one tomorrow, although I did call it good trade in Mew today. But don't think we're shorting everything every day here now if it's falling. Uh, FCX actually had a gap today. I don't know if this actually had any. It did have something. Well, well, hold on. No, it did have something at 9 o'clock. I would have to go back and rate this. This is falling though. This actually had a huge move. I don't, I have to go back and rate this. Actually, you could have, this has moved a dollar 30. Look at that. I didn't, I didn't rate this at all. Look at the FCX. Does anyone know the reason for this gap? It actually gapped yesterday as well big move in this. I mean, this is this is done here now, though. Okay, market trying to hold. Market trying to hold the SPY. Market trying to hold the QQQs. Whether or not it does it today or not is nobody's, anybody's guess. Market could be neutral today into the close, or could be red. It will not recover green, though, after this today now. 10.15, market trading down for 45 minutes straight, and we actually gapped up. So we gapped up and failed in the gapped up today and fell down into this area of support we're red on the day. The red could continue or we'll close neutral. Either way, we won't be green today. Could you short all day? Yes. Is there anything really to short now? No. Why? Summer, people off, holiday week. Call a nice trade in Mew if you did it. If you didn't do Mew, you didn't do AMD, there's no reason to trade this afternoon. FCX has gone to the target. If this rallies back, you could do it on a 15-minute chart at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Why would you sit all day for five hours to do that? Wait for something good. Don't be over-anxious. Don't be desperate in anything you do. Be patient. Wait. Let it come to you. Let the market give it to you. That's what I did today, although I really could have done that move. But if I had, I probably would have put the stop at 1825, and then the risk to reward wouldn't have been as good because it's really hard to be tight, 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 tight on something that is not a brand new gap. And I didn't rate that, so I would have called it on the fly and done it on the fly, and I just didn't want to do that. But I saw it, and I called it. I don't want to do fly trains when I haven't traded for a week, when earnings season is just coming upon us, and there's going to be a million things to do, and we will have lots and lots and lots to do. Okay. Does anyone have any questions about anything else? Gap classes this weekend, if anyone wants to retake it or any trials want to do it. I'm around. I have a lot to do this week, a ridiculous amount of things to do beyond compare. So that's my life right now. All right. Have a good day. No watches for tonight. See you tomorrow. There may be some things that gap tonight, but you'll have to watch them live and see. Nothing that I know that's coming out that would be of interest. Okie doke. Good job today and everybody that did the Mew. Congratulations. Thank you, Princess. All right, I'll talk to everybody tomorrow. You're welcome.